Hey everyone, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I've got Emil here with me. How you been, Emil? Been good, mate. How you been? Good, man. I've um, I've seen you guys do uh, podcasts. Yeah. You and um, Abraham. Yeah, and Abe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really miss it coming back to it. I really miss it. it took some time off. Yeah. Uh, it was a much needed rest for me. Uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to have you back. Thanks, man. Um, and which actually ties with what we're going to be talking about today is uh, making decisions, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the good decisions that we need to make, uh, especially if you're a workaholic like me, uh, I really just like, you know, work, ministry, family, and always yeah. get yourself busy. Sometimes you struggle to um, kind of encourage yourself and push yourself to have some rest. Yep. So it was it was actually a good thing for me. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, has has your um has things with you gone? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. We, uh, I don't know if you saw the videos we did with um that I did with Abraham. Uh, not yet. Not yet. I'm okay. gonna get to it. Yeah. yeah. So um, it was pretty pretty fun. Um, we had a good time uh, making the videos and uh, yeah, it's it's. But I missed you know working with you as well. Nice, nice. Um, maybe you prefer me more than Abraham. That's not a problem. <laughs> Abraham, if you're watching this, we still love you, man. <laughs> Always. Uh, we, we can start it with a verse, actually, because yes. we're, we're, we might be doing a two-part series mm. in this because it's a, it's a very important topic and yep. it might take more than half an hour to, mm -hmm. to do it, so we might do two episodes on it. Uh, but where we can start is we can start with Scripture in Deuteronomy 30, and we can start from verse 16, and this is God speaking to his people. He's saying, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Now, that's, that's the blessing of mm. making that good decision. But if you turn your heart, uh, sorry, but if your hearts turn away so that you do not hear and are, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you will surely perish. So there's a consequence mm -hmm. there to making that decision to walk away from God and to live an ungodly life, right? He continues, he's saying, you shall not, um, sorry, you shall not, oh, where am I? You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. Mm -hmm. And then God calls a witness here between him and his people. In verse 19, he's saying, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today <clears throat> against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Yeah. So what we can start with is we can start with saying that not every choice has the same outcome, yeah. right? Good decisions bring blessings in your life, godly decisions, speaking about that, and bad decisions curses. bring curses into your life. And not only that, death, right? Yeah. So he speaks about that. It's about a blessing and a curse. It's about life and death. And death. Yeah. So I think that's a very good scripture to start with. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's your opinion on that? Well, I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, there are, there's always two roads that you can travel. You can travel the wide one or you can travel the narrow one. And uh, you see here, the, the narrow one takes you to life, but it's hard to, you know, hard to traverse that one. Yeah, yeah. But the one that's wide and everyone can enter, multiple people can enter at the same time, leads to death. So True. choose life. Choose life. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually very important. And I think... Uh, you know, obviously, when you experience the consequences mm -hmm. of, of a bad decision, and in this case is that God's own <clears throat> people, sometimes they would go after idols, after other other gods, yeah. that we, obviously bad decisions lead to bad consequences, bad consequences lead to complaining, right? And yeah. self-pity and, and so on. Yeah. So sometimes you might see people or even ourselves, we might have experienced that, that after making a bad decision, we often lament our our life, right? Yeah. Where we are in, in life. And then we think, oh, you know, if only people could feel sorry for me or 
what is God doing in this in this situation in yeah. my life? But then you you start to realize that the only person that brought you to where you are is yourself. Yeah, you are the one that whether it might be one bad decision or multiple bad decisions, and we can speak about that. Right, mm. we we have examples in the Bible where people start to make one bad decision over another bad decision over another bad decision mm. in the sense of trying to cover up then right sure. from the beginning, you know, that first bad decision. Yeah. And an example of that, for example, you, you would get someone that might steal something, right? It could be something small. And if that person gets caught, their first reaction is to lie. Yeah. Because they think that to get me out of my first initial, problem, yeah. I need to lie, right? Yeah. So I'm making one bad decision to cover up for another one. Yeah. And sometimes we can get into that uh, mindset of saying, if only I could do this, even though it's not morally right, or it might not benefit me or other people, but it might get me out of a certain situation in my life. Yeah. So that's that's something that, you know, after we can fall into that trap. We see multiple examples of this in the Bible um, from the beginning to the end. For example, uh, the first bad decision we see being made is by Adam and Eve. Hmm. Uh, they had a choice. They chose wrong. Everyone suffered for it. Yeah. The consequences, just like that one, it says, so that you and your descendants may live. It doesn't just affect you. Sometimes yeah. your decision, most of the time, affects others as well. And when you see with Adam and Eve, their decision affected all of mankind. All humanity, yeah. All of humanity. And what did they do when, when confronted with their sin? They shifted blame. Yeah. So I'll actually read it. So after Adam and Eve um, eat of the tree, mm. um, and obviously they they started to be conscious of their sin, Yeah. Uh, started to recognize even their own nakedness. In verse 8, they, they have an encounter with God, right? Yeah. And it says, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Mm. And it's interesting that that bad decision brought a certain fear in Adam's heart that wasn't there. Initially, yeah. yeah. So before that, you would assume that when God was walking in the garden, Adam and Eve went and met with him. God, yeah. right? But here, it's something different. And even God is trying to make Adam and Eve recognize that there is something different now. That's why God is asking yeah. Adam, he's saying, where are you? And Adam is like, well, when I heard you, I hid myself. And sometimes we we might have that mindset that when we fall into a sin, right, and that it is a bad decision in itself, that sometimes we hide ourselves from God. Yeah. Right. So it's basically making another bad decision. What the Bible actually encourages us to do is when we fall into sin, we need to come back into repentance. We need to come back into the presence of God. So that they can be revealed, all yes. the wrongdoings. So th that's a good example of showing that how one bad decision can lead to another. But then it doesn't stop there. Nope. Um, he doesn't only hide himself. He continues and is saying um, in verse 11, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. So that's another bad decision of putting the blame on God. And saying, really, yeah. hold on God. <laughs> it's, it's the person that you've actually brought in my life, the one that was meant to be a blessing. She's the one that's putting me into this position. And then obviously God even asked the woman, right? In verse 13, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. 
So everyone is shifting the blame yeah. on someone else. It's him. It's her. It's yeah. Yeah. It's it's that just one bad decision after another that doesn't make our lives better, our situation better. In fact, it just gets it worse. And I think you're right. And and the reason why that is is because everyone, every Christian will fall at some yeah. point in their life. That's not the end all of it. It's getting back up and being held, holding yourself accountable for your mistake. That's what they didn't do. Yeah. I don't know what how it would have turned out if they did, but they didn't. Well, still like... Their they, punishment is the punishment. Yeah. They have to die. God said they would die. They would surely die. Their sin has entered yeah. the world. And, and I think the lesson that we can learn, um, and, and this would be a very good lesson for Adam and Eve, in first john chapter 1 verse 8 to 10 is saying if we have if if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us yeah. and then what does he encourage people to do in verse 9 he's saying if we confess our sins mm -hmm. he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness yeah. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar mm -hmm. and his word is not in us. Yes. So I think that's an encouragement of saying, okay, if I made a bad decision, right? If I've committed a sin, yeah. it could be any type of sin. Yeah. It could go from lust to drunkenness pride. to pride to theft to whatever it is, right? And there might be consequences to that. Yeah. And right? if you commit a crime... Um, you, you can't go to the police station and say, by the way, I've committed the crime. Oh, God forgive but, me. Yeah, I've asked for forgiveness. They're like, yes, you might be forgiven in God's eyes, but there is consequences that people deal with in, in life. And sometimes even with God, even though I forgive you, but there's still consequences yeah. to the action. Um, usually it's earthly consequences. Um, more often than not. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any examples where it was a spiritual consequence, but at least not at the top of my head. Uh, but usually there is a consequence to your actions. Um, for example, let's think of Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. He chose to do what he did. He chose to run away, right? Yeah. He chose that. So what did God do? He made the fish swallow him. Yeah. Right? Brought a storm. Yeah. And then they threw him out. <laughs> and it's interesting that those heathens were more afraid. Yeah, more afraid of God, more, um, I guess, righteous in, in the sense of a human being to say we, we need to make the right decision because some higher power is, is angry really at us. upset <laughs> with us. Or well, someone yeah. on the boat is, you know, wrong. It's not us. It's you. Get out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. But speaking of consequences, the way God brings these consequences to our bad decisions in the sense of how a father uh, rebukes and trains his son. Mm -hmm. That's something that, as you were talking, it reminded me of Hebrews 12. Mm -hmm. And this is the writer of Hebrews says in verse 5 and 6, he's saying, but have you forgotten the exhortation, which means the encouragement, which speaks to you as sons? Mm -hmm. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him yep. for whom the lord loves he yep. chastened and scourges every son whom he received yeah so this whole idea that i've made a bad decision i know god is faithful to forgive me because that's what we read in first john chapter oh, one to discipline me. but at the same time there is a discipline mm -hmm. now that discipline doesn't take away the sin away no. Because that sin is being taken away by God's forgiveness. It's yeah. grace. But that discipline actually builds up our character. Absolutely. It helps us grow. Yeah. Because if we make a bad decision, God forgives us. But there is no rebuke. There's no consequences. There's no lesson you to be grow. learned. You're not growing in your faith. You're going to make that mistake again, most likely. Therefore, you're repeating your mistakes. Yeah. So I think that's very important for us as Christians to um, not not to be tempted 
to cover a bad decision with another bad decision. Rather, we need to be encouraged and believe in the word, right? The promise of the word that God is actually faithful, that he will forgive our sin mm -hmm. and that we can come to him confidently, yeah. right? We can actually approach God's presence with confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting about that, Adam and Eve didn't do that. No. When God was walking in the garden, they heard his presence, they hid away. The Bible's encouraging us in the New Testament is that if we made a bad decision, spiritually speaking, that we need to come to God's presence, yeah. not to hide away. That's right. Because that's one of the devil's yeah. schemes. It's like, well, if you disobeyed God, then run away from God. Yeah, because God is angry at you. Yeah. But you don't deserve <laughs> him, which we don't. But that's why it's grace. It's yeah. not something we earn. It's something that's freely given. You know, despite the fact that we don't deserve it. Um, and, I, and I think the people that love the darkness, that love their evil deeds, they stay in the darkness because they don't want the evil deeds revealed because they're ashamed, right? Deep down. Oh, they say, oh, we're we proud of who we are. We pr But no, they're deep down, they're ashamed. Why are you still hiding in the darkness? Sure. Because sure. you're ashamed. You have shame. Yeah. Right. Adam, literally, his excuse of why he was hiding is because he was ashamed. True. He literally said, oh, oh I'm naked. That's yeah. his shame, his nakedness. And I'm literally and, you know, metaphorically. Yeah. That was his shame. And what's interesting about this, uh, man, I'm getting a lot of verses flooding into my head as we're having this conversation. <laughs> there's a conversation. lot of, there's so much examples of wrong choices yeah. in the Bible. <laughs> the whole idea that when the devil's putting this idea in your head that you've made a mistake, God is upset with you, therefore hide yourself. What's interesting is the Bible that says, where can you, you hide? You can't hide even show. Yeah. So yeah. this is Psalms 139, verse 7 and onwards. He's saying, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from uh, your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. So the whole idea is don't hide from God's presence. Because you can't. Be in God's presence. <laughs> and God's presence will lead you back to salvation. That's right. Lead you back to repentance. And this whole idea of sometimes pitying yourself. Mm. Yeah. And that, oh, you know, that kind of, sometimes it can be victim. self self-righteousness as well in the yeah. sense of, I've made a mistake against God. You know, God doesn't want to talk to me. And until God is ready to talk to me, then I'm going to come back. But that's not the conviction that God wants us to have in our lives. Yeah. What does Paul say um, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7? Um, and, and this is in regards to obviously having um, <clears throat> this sense of um, godly conviction godly sorrow mm -hmm. and worldly sorrow. And this is what he says in, um, in verse 10. He's saying, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. So the whole idea is I've made a bad decision. Instead of adding more bad decisions into that, hiding from God like we saw with Adam, or lying, or even shifting the blame from ourselves to someone else, which is what Adam did, right? He dared, yeah. and he's like, you know, God, it's that, it's that lady that you gave me. You know, the one, the one I said, you know, she's my flesh, she's my burn. I'm, I'm one with her. Yes, that, that's the one that made me eat of that, tr uh, that tree, that fruit. But I think we need to recognize our bad decisions. I, th I think we and have to grow up because uh, he was acting like a child. Um, let's be honest. That's what a child does, right? He shifts his blame to his sibling. His sibling shifts the blame to the dog yeah. and so on and yeah. so forth. It's just, it's we've been doing the same thing ever since Adam. Because like, I know some people say it's not fair, you know. Why does did, why did Adam's wrong like mistake make us all suffer? Well, you're doing the same thing. Mm. You're not different from him. True. In other True. words, you would have done the same thing, mm. most likely. 
because you're the same as him. You're, you are literally his offspring. You come from him. You are just like him. You're just like your father, Adam. That's why we have to choose a second Adam. That's why we have to choose Jesus to be our example. We have to say, we're not going to be like our, our, our father, Adam. We're going to be like our father, Jesus. We're going to follow Jesus' example and do what he did. He was always accountable for his actions. He always held himself to a higher, um, like, like, you know, example. He always held himself to, to, uh, to a, a degree where you have to be above everyone else, yeah. right? It was something that was impossible to do for a human. And he's like, be like me. But it's impossible for us. But nothing is impossible through Christ. That's why we need him. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the, the helper to get us to that point where we're just like Christ. And, and in order for us to do that, we need to be accountable for our choices. And we need to admit that sometimes we do make the same mistakes that the people of the Old Testament and New Testament um, did. And um, regarding that, I was going to share... Um, you know the story where the, the rich uh, man came to Jesus and he said, what can I do to inherit, you know, ev like how to have everlasting life? And what, what did Jesus say to him? He said, you have to give up everything you own, all your possessions. What did he choose? His wealth. His wealth. He chose the world. He had a choice. He weighed it. He weighed the options. And he's like, I have too much to lose. I have too much. And he walked away sad. Like he, was, he wasn't happy when he walked away. Oh, you know, I'll stay with the world. He was sad. Because he wanted it, but it was too much for him. It was like, oh, the cost is too great. What a shame. And he walked away, like, ashamed. Like, oh, it's such a shame. I can't give it. I wish I could, but I can't. I have too much to lose. So he made his decision. And unfortunately, that decision will lead to death. So sometimes we have that decision to make where we're, we're weighing the options. Christ is this way. I know it's this way. And, you know... The world is this way. I know it's this way. What I have to give up for either one? And sometimes we weigh it and it's, you know, we're like, oh, it's too much to lose. We'll go with Christ. Oh, it's too much to lose. We'll go with the world. But unfortunately, that's not the, the, the ones we have to worry about. The ones that are very clear cut. It's the ones that are kind of not so black and white. The ones that are kind of more misleading. Like, oh, it's, it's fine to do this. There's, there's nothing wrong with that singular act. It's those ones that are more frightening to me. Yeah, the ones like that are hidden trying to abide in the gray area gray area like for for example right is there anything wrong with me saying hey let's go grab a beer just one beer mm. no oh, we go grab beer no problem yeah let's have another one is there anything wrong we have another one we have another one another one another one eventually there was a line that was crossed we didn't even realize it but it was we get in the car we drive we're not meant to we hit someone mm. right there's consequence to their actions. We regret it. Oh, we're so like, sorry, but that person is gone now. And now our life has changed. It might not be ruined, but it's changed. Right? Yeah. And now we have to live with the consequences, regardless of how sorry we are, regardless of how we feel. Even if we hold ourselves accountable, say, yeah, we are accountable for what we did. We want to pay the... There's consequences. Our lives are no longer the same. And there's no going back. And those actions, is, is not, it's not just one yes. It's many yeses. That lead to that. And that's how the devil comes to us. He doesn't come as this evil with horns and, and, and like looking like a goat. And, you know, like the ones that are portrayed in the movies, like with red eyes. I'm going to murder you. I'm going to burn. Like, no, 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 no. Mm. It's usually a lot more subtle. It's usually, here's what you want. Just take it. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Just accept. It's like the temptation where he tells um, <clears throat> Jesus, say, why didn't you turn that bread, uh, rock into a bread? Is that a sin? You're like, oh, you know, it's like you're turning something to food. I'm hungry. I want to eat. It's, it's just those temptations, as you yeah. said, that might seem very innocent on the surface. But they're not. But they have real life consequences. It's and, a web. Yeah. It's it's a web that it, it's a little web. And, and, and eventually you're like, oh, it's just there's nothing there. And you walk past it and then you're caught. And there's just many of them. It's not just one. It's just many. And then it stacks up and it ends up going to a place where it's like, where, you're, where you've taken so many forks in the road that now you're so far away from the original path that you don't even know where you are anymore. And you don't know how to get back. You don't, you don't even know how you got there. And you're like, how did I get here? Yeah. And that's why Jesus recognized that straight away. And he said, it is written straight away. You know, he straight away cut him off. He said, no, but it is written that you have to do this. Yeah. It is written, 
you know, that they, after you don't live by bread alone. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. And then he's like, it is also written that you should not test the Lord thy God. Yeah. You know, and, and he, like he always, always gives a rebuttal where it's like, but it is written. He, he, he always, because the devil is also using verses from the Bible as well. He's also using, he's quoting, you know, yeah, the Bible, scripture. but he's twisting in a way to set to, you know, like, you know for his agenda. Where Jesus is like, no, but this is God's agenda. This is what God wants. That's what you want. You've twisted the word for your own selfishness. Because I know some Christians do that. Mm -hmm. They twist the word, they cherry pick some certain verses to suit their narrative. Yeah. It's like, so, well, that's not what God wants. <laughs> would you say, obviously learning from that is quoting the scripture is not enough. Because you could quote the scripture with an attitude of the devil. Yep. Or you could quote the scripture with the attitude of Christ. Yeah. It just depends what you want to do. Are you quoting scripture to fight a sin in your life, or are you quoting a scripture to justify, to justify a sin yeah. in your life? It's, it's all about That's, it's all about you know the 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 heart behind it. The, what's the motive? The motive, yes. Yeah, because the Satan's motive was for Jesus to serve him. Because yeah. and he made it abundantly very clear at the end. Yeah. When Jesus said no, 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 eventually he's like, okay, enough, enough, mm -hmm. you know, enough mirrors and smoke and stuff. Like here, here's here's the what, real me. Here's the real me. This yeah. is what I want. And this is what I give you. And and I think we were watching a movie where he said, notice that Jesus never said, it's not yours to give. He said, because he said, I'll give you the world. Yeah. Jesus just said, I don't want it because I serve the Lord thy God. And he's the God of this world. Yeah. So, so he can give you the things in this world, the things that your heart wants, your, the things that you desire. And you might be like, oh, but my conscience is not grieved. Yeah, because your conscience is dead sometimes. Sometimes our conscience is dead. Mm. Sometimes we feel like, oh, but I didn't feel anything wrong with what I was doing. I wasn't convicted. Yeah, because your conscience is dead. Yeah. And, and you, you don't want to really rely too much on your conviction. No. It's you want to be convicted by the Spirit. Yes. And you want to be convicted by the Word. Yes. And that's the whole idea by godly conviction, godly sorrow, and mm -hmm. godly uh, worldly sorrow. Yeah. It's, yeah, you might not be convicted, but that doesn't mean what you're doing is right. It just means your conscience is dead. But or Jesus your, can revive it. Yeah, your scales are not calibrated mm -hmm. according to the word. So that's why it's very important that when it comes to our truth, we want to take it from scripture. Amen. And whether we want to justify a decision or condemn a decision, we need to go back to the scripture, scripture yeah. and say, okay, what does God say about this? And I really don't want to just justify because I'm doing it. Or condemn it because I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. Right? Sometimes a person would condemn something um, because they don't do it. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, if the Bible doesn't say anything about it, the Bible doesn't say anything. You can have some principles, right? You can build some principles. It might affect your testimony. It might affect this. It might yep. affect that. Great. But you don't want to be condemning things just because you might personally not agree with it. Mm -hmm. We also need to go back to the scripture. There's so much more to talk about. So much. But what's your closing comments? I'd say choose life. <laughs> choose life. Yes. That's my closing comment. And by choosing life, you need to be in the presence of God and yep. you need to come to God because God himself is life. Yes. Amen. Right? I am the way, the truth, and the, and the life. So for you to have life and for you to choose life, you need to come to Christ. Yeah. Don't be... Um, uh, I understand there's shame, there's conviction, but don't let that push you to hide away from God. Yeah. One, you can't hide away from God. Mm -hmm. And two, one know. bad decision doesn't cover up for another bad decision. What we need to do is come confident in our faith to Jesus and he's faithful to forgive us. Yeah. And that's something very important for us. Amen. Um, in the next part, hopefully we can talk about some new testament example i've got one here in front of me sure um what attitude can help us actually um kind of um not obviously right the wrong because it's already been done mm -hmm. but rather than try and repair some of these bad decisions that we're making currently in our lives yep um and um another thing Actually, we'll just keep it there. Yeah. I don't want to spoil it too no much. Spoilers, yeah. But God bless you all. Hopefully you've enjoyed the first part. Uh, we're doing a second part shortly. Yep. And yeah, enjoy your time. Take care. Take care. God bless.